What does it mean to have a vintage, classic British car here in Canada as we enter the real new millennium, 2001? Let's find out with a fellow that's got a car that's celebrating its 50th birthday, and it's this car right here, and this gentleman, Ted Jackson. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Welcome to Men and Motors. Thank you. Now, this is a lovely car. It's an MGTD. That's right. Tell us all about the car and how you came across it. Well, it's a 1951, and... Uh, uh, I hadn't originally wanted a TD, I'd originally wanted the next one up, the TF, but then mm -hmm. I saw this one in the paper and I went over to see the previous owner, and as I walked up his driveway, he had the car parked just about the way your camera is seeing it now, Right. and I thought, oh, gee, you're pretty. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, he and I came to a deal, and uh, my wife and I have been enjoying this car now for about a year and a quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful. We've been on some really major trips in it. Is that right? Oh yes. So a TD then, just for some of the, uh, uh, those people that may not know the history and lineage of the MG, how does the TD, the TF work? How, do, how does all of that work in terms of the uh, reg? Okay, well, uh, the T series started in 1935 with the TA, mm -hmm. and in 1939 they built the TD, but they only built about 350 of them because the right? uh, war intervened. Right. In just after the war, they started to build the TC, which was not much different than the TB. Right. And in 1950, they started to build the TDs. I see. The early ones, like mine, have some leftover parts that are part of the TC because they were still on the oh, assembly line. Right. So mine right. has uh, quite different uh, sure. tachometer and speedometer than, uh, than a later TD. So would your car, Ted, have come from the Abingdon Works? Yes, it would. Right yes, there in was. Oxford. Right there. Absolutely incredible, isn't it? It's, here it is in North York, Ontario, in Canada, yep. with the snow all around it, and it came from the Abingdon Works right there. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the features that you love, that you fell in love with. When you bought it from the previous owner, what was it that just really endeared itself to you? Well, you know, the, I had him take me for a drive in it. Mm -hmm. He said, you want to drive? And I said, you drive first. And I got in the passenger seat, and I looked out over that big black hood and mm -hmm. those chrome headlights, and I thought, I'm sure glad I didn't buy a TF because right? it doesn't have them. I've always loved the running boards myself and that huge sweeping shape that it re reminds me of the yeah. shapes on a beautiful woman's body, you know? Yeah. Yep. It's very romantic, isn't it? It is. It is really, it is really classic. I, I think perhaps the best part of owning it is driving along the street and watching the heads turn. Yeah, you, know? you get a lot of head turners? Oh, I tell you. Yeah. And if you drive by a high school, the kids go nuts. Oh, do they? Oh, they go absolutely crazy. Is the car uh, entirely original, or is there a couple of things that have been improved over the years? It has a modern oil filter, mm -hmm. and it has uh, pancake air cleaners on the, the twin carburetors. Oh, I see. That's about the only thing that's different. Oh, no, and the rear end, uh, the differential's been changed to an MGA 4.3 ratio, which makes the car run, run rather better smoother. on the highways. At know? higher speeds, yeah. yeah. Ted, could we have a look under the bonnet, as you'd call it? Sure can. Great. Sure can. We'll go in on the, the carburetor side. They, right. That's the more interesting side to look okay. at, I think. So those latches just... They just latch snap down. Snap open and then... And you can stand the thing. I'm going to roll it right back. I don't okay. normally do this. I normally stand it a little higher, but this okay. gives you a bit better view. 50 years old. Yes. So now, this is not... Uh, we've seen, seen, seen some cars that have been broken down to a, a every small component and polished to perfection. This is a working car that you've chosen to keep this way. Well, yeah, my, my engine compartment is not as clean as the purists would have it. This but one, I like to see a bit of grime and grit. It shows that the, the engine's doing its thing. I mean, we don't want to see loads of oil coming out of that rocker cover uh, gasket, but yeah. you, you want to see a bit of that. Yep. I think you do anyway. Well, we've put uh, better than almost 7,000 miles on this car in the year that we've been driving it. Oh, really? And, and, and that's the summer year, basically. Well, for British viewers, we should probably say that in, on these roads, with a typical job Monday to Friday, you would do uh, 12,000 miles. Yeah. So you're doing half of what is an average commute in a year. Oh, yeah. And this is only on the road for five, six months of the year. That's right. Right, so you're doing some good long tri trips. Where have you been? We've been down to Rutland, Vermont, for the New England MGT Register. Right. And we've been... Uh, we did a circle tour of the Great Lakes with uh, about 20 other cars of this really? uh, vintage from the MGT register. Now, when you're doing a long trip like that, touring in a, in a 50-year-old TD, I would imagine that the, uh, um, the seating is not as comfortable as we have in the ergonomically designed new cars of today. Actually, my wife and I find this very comfortable. Really? We really do. It's, we were surprised. Really? Yeah. It's very comfortable to, to roll along in. 
So Ted, tell me what we're looking at under the hood. Well, uh, fuel pump. That's a big fuel pump, really. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. uh, air cleaners, of course, twin right. SU carburetors. Right. And uh, starting motor. Right. And one of the two horns. Sure. And the toolbox. Which was a standard feature back then? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. So what are you storing there? Your lunch or is there? <laughs> I've not no room for my lunch. Uh, spark plugs. Oh, right. A roll of tools. Sure. An extra coil. Now, are these, are these readily available parts like this, spark plugs? It just takes any spark? Well, it, it, it doesn't take that. just any spark, but those are modern spark plugs that, right. that actually match the specifications. Oh, the original good. spark plugs that were specified are no longer available. Well, that's good then. So what happens if you need something like a water pump or you need a, a gasket for the rocker cover? Uh, there are two places in the States that uh, are primary sources of things like that. Mm -hmm. And I've had to buy a water pump. Oh, really? And uh, it was no trouble to get. Good for you. Just expensive. Well, how about the other side of the engine? Let's have a look at that. Right. 50 years old. Wow. Wonderful. There it is, MG Car Company, Abingdon on Thames. That's right. Body type 22381. What would that mean then, body type? The engine numbers are also a part of it, so you'll see old cars that they say numbers match. Well, the numbers on this don't match. The original engine uh, was replaced with an engine that actually is about 200 numbers earlier in the series. Oh, is that right? I see. But that was fairly common practice back in those days. So on this side then you have, of course, the distributor cap and the four spark plug leads, and this is the uh, generator, generator, is it? Yep. Right. And that, instead of being an alternator, it's generating power. That's right. I see. Right. Good. Okay. Good. And your tachometer, incidentally, curiously enough, runs off the back end of the generator. That's kind oh, of a I standard see. kind of MG thing, I think. Oh, right. Very good. Uh, and there's the other horn. You right. get one horn that's high and one horn that's low, and they make a nice blended noise. Really? Can we hear that? Oh, sure. Excellent. Let's yeah. hear that. 50-year-old horn. I wonder what... <sighs> that's a nice sound. Isn't it? I wonder what semitone that is. Now, Ted, what's this? Is that a pool cue or something? That's the gas gauge. The gas gauge? Well, they, there's, there is a warning light in the car to tell you when you're getting low on gas. You're joking. But that's just a piece of dowel that's marked off in liters on one side and uh, U.S. <laughs> gallons on the other side and I have to plumb the tank with it if I want to find out how so much gas So you just dip? Is. I just dip. And where's the gas tank then, at the back? The gas tank is at the back. So show us how you do that, not actually opening it, but just, well, you would just come to the back when you're at takes, the service station and... It takes nothing to, to you just right. open it up and you drop it in. Really? Now, that's funny that there's not been anybody in the aftermarket uh, industry come up with a better plan, though. Well, a in, piece the after, of dowel. in the aftermarket industry, people actually sell sticks marked out like this. Is that <laughs> <laughs> so that is the aftermarket industry for dipping the, uh, the stick on the fuel tank. Amazing yes. stuff. The well, uh, main reason that I actually plumb the tank, incidentally, is that the uh, uh, valve head, cylinder heads on this, are not hardened. I see. And uh, so... I, when we went off of leaded gas, mm -hmm. I add a lead substitute, and I it has see. to be mixed quite precisely, so I right. have to know how much gas I'm going to put in. To mix it properly. To mix it properly. To the right ratio. Amazing. What would we have to do to have a drive in the car? Why, you'd only have to ask, Adrian. I'd That's love to have delighted. a ride if I could. Do you think we could? Sure. Oh, that'd sure. be fantastic. Why don't we take the side curtains off? It makes it more fun. Sure, okay, okay. great. All right, we've got the windows off, Ted. Let's go for a ride. Boy, this is a bit of a tricky uh, You like entry the suicide point. doors? Yeah. So called, unkindly called. Right. It's a bit of a squeeze, but yeah, I think we can do it. Getting the second leg in is always a bit of a challenge, it seems yeah. to me. Ah. Beautiful wooden dash, too. That's the a tribute to the previous owner. These cars never had a wooden dash originally. Oh, really? The, the dash originally was covered in vinyl, the same as the door frames are, the doors inside. Oh, there, you can see it there. And the previous owner made the steering wheel. It's uh, not standard. Really? Uh, he also arrived here with, uh, with box after box of stuff, saying, well, if you want to put the original air cleaners back on, really? there they are. If you want to wow. put the original oil filter back on, here it is. You want sure. the steering wheel? Yes. The dash, yes. Wow. Good. And, and those are important yeah. because uh, they're all worth money. Mm -hmm. Right. Manual choke a little bit. Right. Uh, make, make sure, sure it's, it's in neutral. neutral yeah. Oh, listen to that. That sounds very nice, doesn't it? 
It does have a lovely sound. It really it does. does. Have a lovely sound. Here we go. What a great ride, Ted. It drives just like it came out of the factory 50 years ago. Actually being in an MGTD 50 years on its birthday, what a thrill, Ted. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Wonderful. Adrian. Would you like to take it around the block? You mean me drive it? Sure. Oh my God, that would be a thrill. If you'll trust me, I'd oh, love to. I'll be as careful as I can, I promise. Let's right. do it, sure. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now, that gas pedal looks strange. There's like a, a round dowel on there. It's a roller. Really? Yeah. And what does that allow you to do? Well, I guess it just rolls under your foot as the, the lever moves, you really? know? Really? There's the clutch pedal. 50-year-old, $17,000 car. Very nice, lovely ride. What a great thrill to be in this. On its birthday, too. Happy birthday to... Tell me about this, though. The uh, wipers are, are unique. Actually, they're, they're, they're quite modern. They, have, they oh. have intermittent and they have power. Come on, really? Want to see the intermittent? I'd like to see the intermittent. Okay, here we go. Are you serious? <laughs> and then what? Want to see the power? Yeah. Okay, uh, you got to watch closely because okay. you might catch this here. I hope you got a fast filament. You're kidding. That's <laughs> it? And, and the revs, does the generator give it more juice? No, I don't think so. 